When Marge Simpson looks at a map of Springfield, what does she see? How far is the Wicked Witch of the West Castle from the heart of Emerald City? Tricky questions, huh? Luckily, a map exhibition at Harvard's Pusey Library makes it easy for our next fantastical trip through Middle Earth. This exhibition is called From Academy Land to Zelda, Mapping the Fictional and Imaginary, which is an exhibition of fictional maps at Harvard University's Pusey Library. Hello, my friends. This is Kathy. Welcome to the Library Hunter, where we explore the wonderful world of libraries and books together. During our trip to Boston, we visited a few libraries at Harvard University. Today, let's begin with the fascinating world of maps showcased in the Pusey Library. Named after Edward Pusey, a prominent figure in Harvard's history, it houses the university's collections in the history of science and medieval studies. The library is known for its valuable manuscripts, rare books, and special collections. This thoroughly enchanting show embraces the inherent fictiveness of maps. The 41 maps on display geographically depict places found in TV shows such as The Simpsons, Twin Peaks, TV shows that became movies like Star Trek and Twin Peaks again, movies such as Star Wars, video games like Fortnite and Final Fantasy, fairy tales Mother Goose, children's literature, even actuarial tables, and the world of internet. When reading or watching a fiction story, not everybody thinks in maps, but it can help us to understand the story, help us to understand a concept. If you have that kind of spatial brain, it helps to bring the story even more to life for you. Personally speaking, I'm always looking for them at the beginning of a story, and if it's not there, I would try to construct the fictional map from scratch on a piece of paper or simply in my brain. There are nearly 30 maps on display that span centuries. The oldest, the accurate map of Utopia by German cartographer Johann Baptist Hohmann dates back to 1720. The satirical paradise includes depictions of regions named Kingdom of Drinkers, Empire of the Fat Stomachs, and the Kingdom of Extravagance. This map from 1834 depicts a journey through the land of academia. One must avoid the creditor swamp, the region of gambling, the domain of Bacchus, and other pitfalls. Two maps from 1943 and 1772 offer contrasting takes on love and marriage. One, dating back to the 18th century, approaches matters of the heart with a somber tone, including Straits of Uncertainty, Languish Island, and ultimately Divorce Island. In contrast, the 1943 counterpart is joyfully optimistic about romantic prospects, a pictorial map of Loveland, with landmarks like Lustrous Lake, Happy as Clam Shoals, and the Serenity Sea. It's interesting to see how the written word, or even an idea, like love, gets put together, and the thought process that goes into translating from an idea or a book into a map of all things. This amusing pictorial map, highlighting the progression from childhood to old age, was published in a 1940 promotional pamphlet for the Metropolitan Life Company. It shows various awful things that can happen to a person, such as vicious sea monsters, icebergs, and rocky shoals, all threatening to sink the ship. This is the last thing your life insurance company wants, and more practical instructional information and wellness advice is provided on the Verso. The idea is to get more people buying their life insurance. The Internet by Martin Vargich in 2014 provides a fascinating look at the internet from nearly a decade ago. Twitter is tiny, MySpace is hanging on at the edge, Zoom is nowhere to be found. The internet is certainly not imaginary, but as a physical location it is. The work of amateur graphic designer Martin Vargich shows the internet as what the internet might look like if it were actually put together on a vintage map. He used data from Alexa to come up with a listing of the top websites, and the result is pretty spectacular. Protocol Ocean is at the top, for example, where the Arctic Ocean is on regular maps. The size of various geographic entities reflects their popularity nine years ago. Zoom, TikTok, Spotify, and Netflix would look a whole lot larger now. Internet Explorer would be gone, or close to it. 
The map is divided into two distinctive parts. The Eastern Continent, the Old World. Showcases software companies, gaming companies, and some of the more real-life oriented websites. Western part, the New World is composed from two major continents. The Northern one showcasing social networks, search websites, video websites, blogs, forums, and art websites. In the very south of the map, there is located Great Southern Land of obsolete websites and online services. Look at this beautiful map of the Land of Oz, illustrating Frank Baum's classic work of children's literature. It is a color map of Oz, with the Emerald City at the center, surrounded by Gillikin Country, Winky Country, Quadling Country, and Munchkin Country. To those who just know, the first book and the 1939 movie of The Wizard of Oz, only a small portion of the top map will seem familiar. The appeal of the two Oz maps on display is enhanced by learning that they were published by the International Wizard of Oz Club by royal appointment of Her Gracious Majesty, Ozma of Oz. Shapes matter a lot when you design a fictional map. This map of Peria was designed to resemble a dragon. Fan speculation says that this is supposed to resemble America and Canada. Even the environment locations are in the same place. Now this is a map of the fantasy series, The Chronicles of Narnia, written by C.S. Lewis. The story transports readers to the magical land of Narnia, where talking animals, mythical creatures, and epic adventures unfold. The illustrator of the books, Pauline Baines, attempts in this map poster to capture the geography of the entire series in a single image. Does it match your imagination? Any enthusiast of the world of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings? In this set of maps, we can see that two different maps were designed for one place, for two different goals. Tolkien was quite involved in the creation of the first map, pictured here of Middle-earth by Pauline Baines in 1970. Although the other map, created by Daniel Reeves in 2012 for the memorabilia market, has a different look and feel, the geography is almost exactly as it appears on the Baines map. Look at this map of Simpsons Universe, displaying the layout, locations, and geographical details of the fictional town of Springfield from the animated TV series, The Simpsons. It includes iconic landmarks such as the Simpson family home, the nuclear power plant where Homer works, Duff Stadium, Moe's Tavern, and other notable landmarks within the show's universe. And now it's time to explore the world of Game of Thrones. This is one of 12 maps that were developed to accompany the Game of Thrones TV series. The author George R. R. Martin was deeply involved in the creation of these maps, and all were adapted from his hand-drawn versions. This finely designed map makes me appreciate the intricate geography of Westeros and Essos even more. What do you think? Terry Pratchett's Discworld series of fantasy novels gets two maps, although initially the author rejected the idea of a geographic representation, believing that you can't map a sense of humor. But happily, he eventually came around. This exceptional feat of fantasy cartography has been hand-drawn over many, many months to depict not only the lands of the disc, but its peoples, flora and fauna, commodities, routes of trade, as well as diverse figures expressing events both historical and mythological. Widely regarded as one of the best games in one of the greatest video game series of all time, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past was an immediate commercial success in Japan and North America, where it was released in 1991 and 1992, respectively. In the game story, you play the hero Link on his quest to save Princess Zelda and banish the threat of evil from the world of Hyrule. The map is an overview of the various places Link will visit on his journey, including Lake Hylia, Death Mountain, and Kakariko Village. Maps are very strange things. They guide us, they direct us, and we trust them. 
yet they're inherently make-believe. The names on them are real enough, but how can some lines on a screen or piece of paper truly capture the essence of the places they're meant to represent? Maps are lines toward a supreme fiction, and maps of real places are as much works of the imagination as maps of fictional places are. From Academy Land to Zelda is definitely a rare show where what we read is as much of a treat as what we see. As beguiling as so many of the maps are visually, their contexts and backstories can be even more so. The world-renowned artist and illustrator Pauline Baines worked on maps for Middle Earth and Narnia. David Lynch brought his charcoal sketch of Twin Peaks to a pitch meeting with ABC executives, trying to sell them on a certain television series, and it worked. Here is a quote that I like a lot. A map does not just chart, it unlocks and formulates meaning. It forms bridges between here and there, between disparate ideas that we didn't know were previously connected. While fictional maps serve creative storytelling, real-world maps depict tangible geography, requiring creativity within similar design frameworks. The bridge between fictional maps and real-world maps lies in the principles of cartography. Both require thoughtful design, considering purpose, audience, and clarity. I will publish another video to share my trip to the Boston Public Library, where they host an exhibition of maps that recorded the development of Boston City. The map gallery also showcases the Boston subway system, also known as the T, has evolved since its 1897 inception. Expanding over decades, it's now a comprehensive transit system connecting neighborhoods, embodying the city's growth and progress. Their preserved map reading room is a great place for enthusiasts to unravel the complexities of a city's history. So don't forget to subscribe now to watch my upcoming videos. Maps offer a comprehensive understanding of spatial information, essential in navigating both fictional realms and the tangible world. Maps serve as indispensable tools, enriching our comprehension and enhancing the depth of experience in both realms of fiction and reality. Thank you for watching this video, my friends. I will see you again soon in my next book adventure. Happy reading. Bye.